the Audi Q7 has been facelifted and here we have it as the sporty SQ7 and we'll go through the changes and also solve the question are the previous generation Audi models actually better than the all new ones that have recently been coming out. We'll go through the exterior, interior and driving details here. It's Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the front. What a huge front single frame grille, this black mask here. This also has an additional black package, that's why. And the new face of change is that we have these L designs here in the S line and in the SQ7 and the Audi rings are really extremely large, but at the same time, they are now more two dimensional and also a chrome delete has been happening. Chili red is this very vehicle color. Chili red metallic, yeah, thank you, yeah. <laughs> thanks for that. Then the headlamps here, they are coming in this case then here, optional matrix LED with laser lights. And you can see more black accentuations due to this black pack all around the vehicle. Also here is the mirror caps. Then, by the way, the headlamps, they also have new, coming with that facelift, digital signatures. You can actually change from the interior for a personalized LED signature experience. Works both front and the rear. Side profile, five, meter, five meters zero seven or 200 inches. And this five meters zero seven, you can very well imagine because this is also 507 horsepower. And we'll soon take a look on the engine compartment here on the hood and then 21 inch wheels we have it today 20 inch would be standard for the sq7 and up to 22 inch are available at the rear axle we also have a rear axle steering available for the q7 that is also standard with the sq7 and this one also comes with the adaptive air suspension then with the sportier note and let's directly take a look under the hood because this is really crucial of course for the sq7 in general you get three zero six cylinders petrol and diesel you'll also find the exact figures here for the normal q7 in the video description and the pinned comment and this being here the sq7 you have the four liter four liter v8 by turbo with 507 horsepower and around four seconds in the acceleration figure classic quattro overdrive 40 percent front 60 percent in the rear and then it adapts a little bit and of course above that would be then the rs Q8 with a little bit more horsepower tune. In the rear we can find more of this black package for example and you can also see here these proximity lights so they change when I go away from the vehicle there we go and when I approach the vehicle again then they say hey go away this is too far um, or too close actually you went too far this is too close that's what i wanted to say so this is a new way to communicate with the outside world also here then with the facelift um, these are also oleds organic led this is in a separate option then once again and sq7 here the batch has been redesigned uh, so you have this one but it also would signalize the s line then it would look like this and i think that's a wrong decision because if you buy an s version of an audi you want this special S batch there and not to be mistaken with an S line, right? Even though it says here S, um, I think, yeah, I think it's the wrong decision. It's also been missing in the front grille and so on. Yeah, what do you think about that? Tell me in the comments. And also the turning indicators, when you have this most extensive <laughs> LED option, you have it, they have them cascading both in the rear and also in the front for this special turning indicator or hazard light effect. Let's get to the interior. This is the key fob here. I think slim and nice as batched in this case and really solid door handles and a great door closing sound front. And oh, even more so in the rear, really. The thing is that um, especially the passenger door actually closes. Shall we show that to you? Just come around because it was something uh, really funny that happened to us um, yeah, many times now, actually. So like the passenger door, probably because there's so much insulation, you know, and the rubber pads and so on. You know, like when you like close it with normal force, it won't close. You really have to it's slam always it. Open. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like with the G class, because you know when Leah was closing it um, gently, then it never never closed actually. But uh, 
I think it's not a big problem. It's uh, more, you can also see it here on this side, there's like a, so much um, like rubber installation and so on. It's also very side and calm, the interior. And <laughs> yeah, that's the wind. And then here inside, this is rather hard, but structured, a little bit soft only. Then we have here a carbon fiber deco element and a lot of microfiber, dynamic microfiber. Then here softer for your elbow and classic controls here for the side mirrors. I really appreciate it. However, no felt covering here on the inside of the door pockets S entry badge since this is the SQ7. In general, the Q7 and SQ7 interior are not too different. Here you have the red contrast stitches on the inside S badge. It will also look similar in the S line actually. Same to the seats in the European market. You can also get this Dynamica frequency it's called. Here, this is a microfiber with a special pattern. That looks really cool, actually. No animal-free solutions are available. And on the US market, you cannot even get this one here. So that's um, disappointing there. You can also see that the lineup is a little bit older now. And here with 189, six for two, there's plenty of headroom <laughs> left. Six five. Six five, blue eyes, yeah. <laughs> 6.2 is fine, right? It doesn't have to be 6.5, six, six, uh, six right? And, uh, and, and I'm also, also in the automotive industry and not in finance. So, um, yeah, but I think it's fine for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very comfy seating position. Also, here the microfiber seats, if you can get one, this is the most comfortable seat here. Great upright seating position. I love that. And also here this platform, like the Touareg as well, the Ventiga, the Q8 here. It has nice, like, yeah. the, like an even sill with the outside here, and this creates a very special atmosphere here. The cockpit overview, this is still the previous generation of the large Audis, and to me, this was a little bit better. The only exception is you have a lot of high gloss black here, and this area field here also tends to do some squeaking noise sometimes. However, here we have a carbon fiber decal element. It's cool. Glove box also properly dampened. But the horizontal stress of this layout is cool. And I also like here the integration of the screen. It doesn't just stand out, pop out. So this integration in the interior, I think, looks nicer than a lot of modern cars. Or what do you think actually about this? Here also the climate unit is in a separate screen and I do prefer the physical Audi unit, but for a touch screen solution, I think this is a rather good solution. Also interesting here, by the way, that you can here use this swiping gesture to sync left and right and off the temperature. Cup holders are here, adaptive as well, really thick shifting lever, classic deal as well. This middle armrest here is soft enough for your elbow, however, it's a big fail because this mechanism here underneath is there that you can actually slide this in and out. But then, there's such a thick, hard box here, you can only put your smartphone really flat and level here, for example, on this inductive charging pad, where it overheats anyway because it's not cooled. Or if you want to put in the cable, you really have to be gentle and everything has to be very flat in there. If something is sticking out just a little bit too high, you are crashing your smartphone and your cable with this thing. You know, you put it down and it's really like, um, I don't know, like a... Yeah, well, like a, what I'm thinking of, maybe Star Wars, um, when they are uh, in, in this squishing pit, you know, and they're trying to escape, yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Back to the vehicle. Back to the future, and then, and then here, the steering wheel, perforation at the side, has a really good size and grip, and I really like, we still have real buttons with clicking sounds on the steering wheel. Once again, when I think about some newer Audi models, like with the, uh, oh, I'm cuddling, <laughs> oh, cuddling with the steering wheel, yeah, yeah. This one's the animal skin though, but real three-dimensional rings here on the Audi, here yeah, of the Audi on the steering wheel. So I also prefer this actually, that's pretty cool, right? And then we have the digital instruments, very clean atmosphere. You can also change something of the views here, for example. I prefer this view, like this, this you know, with the classic round gauges and so on. And we also have a head-up display. There we go. It's flickering at the moment. It does not flicker for your real eye. And then the infotainment system. There we go. Maybe Leah can close the door yeah. so we don't have reflections from the side. So here, no, it's not closed again. <laughs> it's not probably closed. 
<laughs> now it's closed and the whole car has been shaken. Thank you. <laughs> so here we go. Classic menu structure. I think this is a rather easy way. And just very important always to deactivate one of the most annoying feature Audi's, Audi has ever invented. is like in display. And then here MMI, touchscreen feedback. So when you would activate this one here, then for everything you click here, like a normal click is not enough. You really have like bang, bang, you know, like it's so ridiculous. So I not, not, have no idea why someone would do that because you're used from your smartphone that you just click something and that's it, you know. Apple CarPlay Android Auto is always there, so most of the time you would use that. And here the drive select can also be pressed down below here. And then you can switch through the different driving modes. Rear seats, first of all the doors, also somewhat dampened here on the top part, the carbon fiber deco element, the microfiber, however no cover line at the instant of the doors. Optional Bang & Olufsen sound system, it's good, it's really good, enjoying it. There may be some more spectacular systems on the market, but definitely the best one for this vehicle here and yeah, you will enjoy the music. And then here, you know that this one is available as a five-seater or as a seven-seater with a third seating row. Um, and of course, both works, let's say. And here, the legroom as I have in the normal version here. There we go, enough legroom left. And then headroom is also no problem. There are also versions with a panoramic roof available, but you will still, even as a tall adult, have enough headroom so I'm 1 meters 89 6 for 2 you remember that then here's actually quite nice that we have the microfiber cover also on the inside part here and then I can fold this open with an interesting mechanism here there we go and then we have another cup holder here which is for oh, tiny 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 bottles it's very high it's, it's it? kind of high yeah. yeah but it's really for let's say children's bottles um, you can maybe sit yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, the smallest children can sit underneath <laughs> it. And what's also cool is, is there also the front seat? Let's see. No, not on the, no, not on the front seat, but here, one, two, three, isofix. So that's good that they also thought about the isofix here on the middle seat, because this vehicle is also frequently bought by families. And here you can also change the seat here, forward and backward. So with every one singularly, there we go. That's a nice sound, right? And it, when I'm not like lifting it completely up, but let it a little bit down this lever, and then da, 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 da. Ah, nice. Like a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, like a roller coaster indeed. And then I can also change the angle or the inclination of the seat right here, more sleeping position. And this is really flexible, you know, like the um, like let's say I can do it from here to here. That looks really funny on camera, doesn't it? So a lot of space here, the most versatile Audi, actually, um, I have to say. And uh, yeah, even show you some more features from the trunk. As I said, today the five-seater version here. And here we also have a climate unit with clicking sounds. It is digital, but it also has these clicking sounds here. And, and I mean, USB, ah, there we go. USB-C chargers here. This was updated now with the facelift. And then you might wonder, wait a minute. Everything I'm showing you today, yeah, is very interesting, really nice. But what has really changed actually in the interior for the facelift? And wait for it. There we go. A new visualization in the digital instruments of the vehicle, better quality. And also, look at that. <laughs> I'm using the turning indicator and it shows it in the screen. This is amazing. It's incredible. It's the most awesome feature I've ever seen in my life. Well, honestly, I think it's really quite cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, when this is the most thing that has changed in the interior facelift, you know that they didn't spend too much money on that. Leah also wants to show you her reaction on this major interior <laughs> facelift change. <laughs> And not to forget, well, it's more an exterior feature. Oh, there's a cool mirroring of Leah there with her sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> so here, there's more an exterior feature, but this also reflects on the interior here that you can pick the individual light signatures on the exterior here from the infotainment. Got the trunk, massive rear hatch. Look at that. Also, this area, you know, where the lights are and so on. And here we go. Fits also in a vertical way. This top cover here automatically goes up and down. Cool feature. 
The overall length is two meters or 78 inches uh, and the just like the normal length here of the trunk is like one meters and 10 or 44 inches and the same also goes here for the width approximately and here underneath you can remove this yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, some of space underneath a replacement tire would theoretically also fit. And the question is, of course, if you have the five seater or the seven seater, in this case, as I've shown to you, this is the five seater. You have folded the seats, it's like a single split, so you can individually fold them. When you have secured them down there, then you have to also pull the strap again, but you can actually put them up again. And what's also interesting here on this side, on both outside sides, I can pull this one here to fold it up and then have like space here but the reason for that is rather the entry to the third seating row if you have a seven seat dynamic mode Yeah, um, that was 250 kilometers an hour. Feels like uh, 100. Feels really. like nothing. It was so silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just went to, you know, because I saw like way ahead some cars probably reduced the speed now. And, and now when you're driving like 140 kilometers an hour, like uh, 80, 90 miles an hour, it, it's like standing still. Wow. And I mean, we are in a really, really large SUV really large and heavy and everything and you hardly feel that here in the dynamic mode adaptive air suspension is being set on the sportier note and we also have the 21 inch wheels on this one here and yeah they are notably stiff so if you want more comfort you would stick with the 20 inch wheels with the standard wheel size for this uh, at least in Europe not sure if um, I've got to check the US build configurator if they already start with larger wheels that's sometimes the case yeah but I mean when you go for the SQ7 you also want some sportiness however for the best comfort really you would put the air suspension to the comfort mode and then go a wheel size lower than that when the road is all even it's all the, all the way fine but some potholes and so on you do feel then well but then the good thing is it doesn't lean at all, you know, so when you're going right and left and so on, you cannot shake up this vehicle, although it has this um, this high weight. And the steering wheel is, the steering feeling is really perfect. It's the great size. Your very fine, small commands are directly transported onto the road. At the same time, to the outsides, you have such a great feeling of the vehicle and usually have that only with way smaller vehicles that you have such a great feeling for it of course when you are once up to speed like we did just now i was really early on the brakes then because if you're really at high speed with that driving cupboard you you have a very long braking distance so you have to bear that in mind and you know shouldn't drive that quickly actually like i, I I usually also don't drive that fast just for now for testing purposes. I drive fast, yes, but usually not that fast. That's the thing. Right, Leah? <laughs> thank, thank you for nodding <laughs> in an acknowledging Sometimes. way. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here, when we go uh, to, to switch back the modes, it's not the most convenient way, I have to say. Comfort mode, now the suspension is being raised and then we have a little bit more forgiving support from it. Yeah, you know what that sign means, guys. That means back to the dynamic mode. <laughs> oh, how it hammers in. Oh, easily up to 200 kilometers an hour again, 125 miles an hour. Wow. I mean, this V8 is delivering big time, big time, and it doesn't create the most extreme noise, actually. But like here in the interior, it's not exaggerated, but you have the... It 
yeah, it's a very satisfying feeling still, definitely. And the whole driving dynamics here, the quattro all-wheel drive, slightly rear-wheel biased. Here's also this uh, additional pack that we have, the differential at the rear. Oh, there's a Ferrari coming from the rear. Doing a race with the McLaren or what? What is this? Interesting. We can join this race. <laughs> I mean, we are capable. So you remember 507 horsepower from this 5 meters 07 length. <laughs> and also yeah, about 4 seconds in the acceleration figure from zero. But you see, even if we are at speeds, we still have really good acceleration. And oh, yeah, it's a, I think it's a Lotus. <laughs> yeah, nice race, guys. I think they are switching the motorways now. Yeah, I mean, and here at 180 kilometers an hour, I don't even have to raise my voice. I'm so relaxed, although we are such high speeds. It is a superb noise insulation. And yeah, definitely one of the most silent SUVs out there. This is also equipped with the additional noise insulation package, considering the total price of that vehicle here. Uh, I think it was like 500 euros extra or something like that, so not too expensive um, considering other expensive options and so on. But it really does the job. It's so extremely silent and relaxing here. At the same time, you have all this abundance of power. We've been talking about the new things in the vehicle and the facelift, and um, yeah, I shown you that as an overlay earlier. Like this. Uh, Ah, the second one was a Corvette actually. So the first was a Lotus, second one was a Corvette. So here we have this assistance systems view in the middle part. You can also go back to the comfort mode. And it's not only showing me these nice visualizations of uh, <laughs> turning indicators and so on, but also the visualization of other vehicles, like other assistance views, you know, maybe also from Tesla. And it's also showing me visualizations of... Right lane. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Leah has to take a look at the GPS. That's a <laughs> good sharing of. The, I'm I'm talking about the car. Leah is checking the GPS. Thank you. Um, yeah, back to this visualization thing. So it's also showing me if there's not enough distance, for example, to the car in front of me. So this I can additional visualization help. But once again, the changes on the interior are kind of limited. You really feel I didn't want to spend too much money on this vehicle. And the thing is, it is also almost perfect for for what it does. You know. Yeah, the V8, of course, consumes a lot of fuel. Um, if you drive it in the most efficient way, like 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour motorway, cruise control, you can score some 11, 12 liters on 100 kilometers. That's some like 20 something MPG US, 23 something MPG UK. That's the most efficient way. When you then <laughs> use all the power, for example, yeah, that raises a couple of liters, but even more, I mean, this really high speed doesn't raise as much as you would be driving short circuits in the city. So city driving then, when you have predominantly city driving, not motorway and so on, this can go up even to 16 liters on one kilometer, so something way, like, way below 20 mpg, like, maybe like 3, 4, 5 mpg less. So. It is one of the most fuel-consuming engine that the German automotive industry can offer to you. That's That has to be said, definitely. So the 3-liter 6-cylinder here in the Audi Q7 and the Audi Q8 also does a nice job for sure. So if you want maybe a better compromise out of that. Here once again, when I'm talking about the assistance systems, I have this elaborated view now in the digital instruments and the car can also keep me in the lane. And it's a very sophisticated system. They also updated that distance in the front and also here active keeping on the side. And you see there are no hectic movements or reactions from the steering wheel. Everything of this vehicle in driving feels so extremely flawless, you know. And you see also this active steering movement is not, let's say, tuned in a way that it's overreacting or guiding you too much. This is an assistance system that is, let's say, rather tuned on, I want you still rather to drive the car yourself, you know what I mean? And some newer assistance systems, they 
react in such a harsh way that you feel like, ah, okay, well, this car is rather meant for semi-autonomous driving than really for driving yourself. And here, lane change is so much fun. And yeah, hardly ever it's possible to drive such a large SUV and have so much fun. And yeah, you know, it's sharing the genes with the Porsche Cayenne and here in the S version, an Audi SQ8, Audi SQ7, they feel pretty much Porsche Cayenne alike, definitely. And um, yeah, this whole platform here being used for so many vehicles, BW Touareg as well, and uh, Bentley Ben Tiger, they're using these synergies for this very platform. It's not the newest platform, but does so many things so well. Yes, I would wish for more animal-free interior. That's definitely also due to this, um, you know, older philosophy they have in this vehicle. So some newer things are missing, yes, but at the same time, a lot of these old traditional values they put in here, German engineering, this is where you can still feel it at, at its best. And I really should say maybe more so than in some of the all new models we've recently seen with Audi. So I really hope that they take some of the experience from this one here and carry it over to the new models because so many things are, I mean, this is like a perfect Autobahn SUV definitely and hey at the same time you can also get it as a seven seater and use it for the family pricing q7 starts 60,000 us dollars northern american market 90,000 then for the sq7 and on the european market for example germany as an example you start at 80,000 euros or then 112,000 euros here for the sq7 including all the options we've shown you here today as it stands here right now 137,000 euros that's of course pretty hefty then from the price overall we have to say that yeah some changes here with the facelift i mean this playing with the light why not i mean if you like that i don't find any harm with that but i do miss the s badge in the front grille and also this new batching design on the rear i think the initial s design for the grille and for the rear is just better when you buy an S vehicle you want it actually to be seen as well and also just for yourself isn't it tell me in the comments and then however I found I mean it's an amazing SUV definitely the ride could be for some maybe too stiff if you go for the 21 inch wheels or even 22 so 20 inch wheels would be better for the riding comfort yeah but then you have to say when you look at the all new Audi models so this vehicle here also from the inside build quality and so on has a lot of very solid elements you just enjoy and also how the infotainment system is being built in yeah, maybe some less black piano lacquer but i feel that for some elements audi went actually a step back with the all new models so maybe at some point it can be good to take a look at like this model here like from an older generation Although it has been like a little bit freshed up now, not too many changes on the interior as I told you. And then maybe to take a step back and see, hey, how can we combine like some new features and take good existing features? You know what I mean? What's your opinion on that? Tell me in the comments and also check out the competitor SUVs here right now.